Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's make a start. So just to remind you, I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled and I've got a principal shader, just a basic material already applied to my shape. Now this, for anybody that's unsure, is just a basic icosphere. So you can load those by pressing Shift A, Mesh and Icosphere. Add whatever subdivisions you want. Um, I have been asked about in my previous materials videos about modeling, but as they're materials videos, I prefer to stick to talking about the materials. I will be doing things about lighting and um, modeling in the future. For now though, I'm just working on materials. So let's make a start. Now, we don't actually want the principled shader, the principled BSDF. We actually want a different principled shader and that is the principled volume shader. So press Shift A and search for the principled volume shader. Now for now, not a lot's gonna happen because A, we've got it plugged into the surface rather than the volume. So you can see the difference there. And B, we've got a bunch of things to shove over this side as well. So let's start by plugging the volume into the volume. And that's for the material output. I'm using Cycles Render Engine. So you can already see it's kind of gone a bit wispy. <clears throat> now, to that, we need to add some color. And we're going to do that via a color ramp. So we'll connect that up to the color slot of the principled volume. Behind that, we're going to add a Voronoi texture. I certainly cannot type today. And we are also going to add a Musgrave texture. Take the distance from the Voronoi factor, uh, sorry, Voronoi texture into the factor of the color ramp. You can already ma just make out some different density going on there. Then take the height from the Musgrave texture and plug that into the vector of the Voronoi texture. Change both of those to 4D and add a mapping node. Connect the vector to the vector. Add a texture coordinate. And take the object into the vector. In between the texture coordinate and the mapping node, throw in a noise texture. Now from this end, we're going to change scale to 1, detail to 1. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see better. And the roughness to 0.75 and distortion to 0.5. So that kind of looks like that at the moment. Um, nothing to change in the mapping node. Scale for the Musgrave texture 1.75, detail of 5, dimension of 5, and lacanarity of 5. Voronoi texture. Uh, leave it as it is. For this color ramp, we are going to flip it. Bring the white value to 0.25, the black value 0.42, and we're actually going to change it from black to, uh, let's say, 
0 0.05. We'll go with that for now. Okay, that's where we're at at the moment. What I'm going to do now though is duplicate that color ramp. Connect the distance from the Voronoi texture to it. Flip it again. Change both ends to be white. Chuck in another point and make that a lightish gray color. Let's say 0.5 on the value. Add in a bright brightness and contrast node. Take the color to the color. Duplicate this color ramp again. Take away that third color you added in. Make this left hand one black again but reduce the alpha. So let's say 0.5 and bring the white over to 0.4 on the positioning. Connect the distance from that Voronoi texture again and add a layer weight node. Take the alpha from there into the blend. Take the object output from the texture coordinate. Plug that into the layer weight node. Either manually add a mix shader or press control shift on your keyboard and drag your right mouse, uh, right click and drag between the two automatically add that's if you've got the node wrangler add-on enabled switch that to multiply take the facing value from the layer weight into the factor the brightness and contrast output from that node into color one disconnect color two and make it black Plug this into the density of the volume. Now you might wonder where it's gone. It's still there, don't panic. We're going to increase the brightness to 0.85 and the contrast to 4. Just a quick correction on the noise texture here. We're taking the factor out into the vector. Okay, now it's still quite faint here. Um, basically that's because it's a gas cloud and there's a lot of light going on in this scene. So let's turn off those references so you can see this better. Okay, so if I disable, what's that one doing? Oh, maybe not all three lights. If I disable all but one of my area lights here, then I get a nice kind of mysterious dark gas cloud. However, if I enable a point light just above and to the front of this gas cloud, you can see how it started illuminating some of the wispy bits. And if I disable all of the area lights and just rely on that one single light, you can see that that now kind of really hits the volume um, that's being generated by this node setup. And uh, also because we've got transparent enabled on our light paths in our render properties, the light is actually passing through what is essentially an icosphere. So if I enable those bits and pieces, you can see that's the kind of uh, sphere that it sits in 
it's passing through all the bits with no density and passing light through that but it's creating shadows for the parts that do have density now for that reason it does take a bit of extra um, what shall we call it on your processor but I think it's worth it you can obviously play around with the settings to get different effects scale kind of just changes um, various different aspects of the whole cloud on the Voronoi texture the scale on the Musgrave changes some of the proportions of the wispiness so just play with it until you get it the way you want it So as you can see, the more I play with this, the more it kind of mucks around. Um, this bit up here, by the way, this is creating a mask to kind of uh, hmm, soften off the edges so that it doesn't kind of end up like you saw there, almost like a solid ball of gas. So it's definitely worth um, keeping hold of that within the node tree. But you can always play around with, like I say, whatever you fancy. Um, now I'm going to send it to render with 500 samples, not denoising because I want to keep that kind of um, gritty film look and just doing small amount of uh, light bounces. And there we go, a gas cloud. And it only actually took 22 seconds in the end, which was very good. I hope you found that useful and we'll come back for more in the future. There's plenty already in the playlist that's available on YouTube. So please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thank you for watching.